right. um, so ladies and gentlemen, next up we have Shafong Wang, senior QE engineer at Red Hat, and he's going to talk about performance test methodology. So welcoming him on stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very excited here, uh, to be here at DevConf this year. Uh, my name is Xiaofeng Wang. Uh, I work in the virtualization QE team of Red Hat. Uh, today, for my presentation, I'm going to introduce you a new pro a network performance test methodology. Um, I was running a performance test uh, earlier this year with a uh, widely used uh, performance test methodology. Uh, my job was uh, to do some uh, network performance comparison between uh, among three different hypervisors, uh, like KVM, uh, ESX from VMware, and Hyper-V from Microsoft. So. Uh, uh, during my testing, uh, some issues uh, blocked my test. Uh, so I had to uh, fix them uh, to finish my performance test. Uh, when all the issues were resolved, I felt that the solution uh, to, the, to the problem uh, can be summarized into a new performance test methodology. Uh, I will give you a detailed introduction on these issues and uh, and the corresponding uh, solutions. Uh, but first, oh, sorry. Oh. Oh, that's not work. Oh, okay. But, f but first, uh, I will show you how I run performance test before. That means with old uh, performance test uh, methodology. Uh, the first step is always run the test tools. Uh, in my case, I chose the iperf, so you can use the netperf or some package generators and else. Uh, so I, I run iperf-s on the server side and iperf-c on the client side with some uh, iperf uh, options. When the test is finished, the iperf will show you uh, your performance result, like this one. So the, the final performance result will be in the last two lines. So in this case, the performance will be uh, uh, 21 gigabit. The third step is to run more tests and get an average value as final as final result. So I guess uh, we always do that. The last step generate the performance test report based on the average result. So this is the how I run the performance test be, uh, before with the old performance uh, methodology. What's the problem here? Maybe you cannot find any problems. I will, I will show you the problem I just found. The first one, there's no step-by-step -step traffic. Just send as much traffic as possible. So what's the meaning of the step-by-step -step traffic? Like this chart. It's a step, 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 step. Uh, for example, if I want to uh, test the 10 gigabit uh, NIC network, uh, network adapters, uh, I will use uh, the traffic should be start from one gigabit to the ten gig to, to the ten gigabit with ten steps. One step will increase one gigabit. So, so it's it's called a step by step. 
traffic. Uh, so what's the problem here uh, without the step-by-step -step traffic? Because the iProof or NetProof just send as much as as much traffic as possible to to against your uh, DOT means the device and the test. In my case, it's uh, network adapters. So sometimes the system will be broken uh, instantly by exiting the max traffic at the beginning of the test. So at this time, I cannot get the performance result of of this system. So I have to do some setup or some things to make the test running. Sometimes it's not running because the system broken. This is the first problem. The second problem is about max value. So you can find, nevertheless, the iProof, NetProof, or something else, they just give you the max value. That means the, the max performance. Uh, in my case, the, the network adapter can support. But it's, it is just a, a max value. So the, the network adapter, in my case, cannot work well at the max performance for a long time. It's just the max, not the, uh, the working value. Uh, have you heard about the, the Intel has a technology called uh, Turbo Boost? Have you heard that? Let me, uh, it's a little bit like this concept, like I just said. That means that the, the Turbo Boost will, uh, you can use the Turbo Boost not for a long time, just at some very special scenarios. So for, uh, for example, one minute or, or just a short time. That's the best, that's the max uh, performance of that CPU. But uh, at the normal scenarios, you just use a lower uh, frequency of the CPU. Uh, the concept is the same as I just said this. So all the a performance test tools like iProof or NetProof just provide you a max value. So, so the max value uh, is able to reach the performance, but the stability cannot get granted with the max value. That's the second issue. The third issue, uh, the test tools like iProof 3 use mean, mean, to calculate the final result. Uh, wh why not median? There might be a result different between, uh, di uh, different between the uh, different uh, algorithm, like mean or median. So what's the best one? I will give you an example and uh, more explanation on this, on the solution section. So the mean and the medium is different algorithm to get, uh, to get the average value. So you choose different algorithm, you can get a different result. This is the third one. The fourth one is there's no way to find a, find a spike uh, from the, the current test result log. Uh, have you heard the, the spike in the performance? That means uh, you can find, in some scenarios, the performance drop, drop to a deep suddenly, or increase to a very high suddenly. So uh, if you just use the iProof or NetProof, you cannot find, find this. You, you just got a final result, right? The last issue, the report is, it's not, uh, sorry, the report is not uh, 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 as uh, user-friendly as I expected. So just to give you a number, no chart, no tables, just, uh, just uh, a number. So that's all of the problems. So what's my solution? For the, for the first issues, uh, we need a, a step load. That means a step-by-step -step load to avoid the, uh, the max or uh, let the, the make 
the I perf or net perf send traffic as much as possible. We give it a limitation. Tell the iperf or net perf how many traffic you should send this time, how many traffic you should send next time. So in my solution, in this case, I will run the iperf multiple times. Each times I will give it a limitation, one with limitation. So the iperf will send that traffic as I expected. That's the step-by-step -step, uh, load. So I use the step-by-step -step load to increase the load until the uh, network or a network adapter reaches a point where the performance diminishes uh, signif significantly. As the load increases, the, the network will, will be able to keep up until it runs out of the resource. That means when uh, if your network adapters cannot support that traffic, the chart will be drop or keep on that keep uh, on a line, not increase. That makes sense. Yeah. How to do that? It's very simple because iProf has a dash B options. Uh, which is able to set the bandwidth. It just needs you run the iProf multi times uh, and run. It it will be uh, very easy because you can write some uh, write a loop to s uh, set up a array about different bandwidths and uh, run the, the iProf multi times. So this is the. The, f the solution of my first problem. Make sense? Yeah. For the, the second issues, uh, I use some mathematics, uh, mathematics to resolve that issues. Uh, I use correlation and R squared. Uh, that's two mathematics algorithm. So I will uh, explain this chart later. So I will give you a brief introduction about what is correlation and R squared. For the, for the correlation, correlation is a, a statistical management of a relationship between two variables. variables. Possible correlations range from one to minus one. And a zero correlation indicates that there's no relationship between uh, variables. And if the correlation of minus one, uh, negative one, sorry, negative one, indicates the, a perfect uh, negative uh, correlations, that means this one. For the, for the one, indicates just a perfect positive correlation, meaning the both variables move in the same direction together. I have an example to explain this. Uh, I have the, this tables about two variables, the temperature and the ice cream shelves. From this table, you can find when the temperature goes up. The ice cream sales goes up as well. So these two variables have a relationship. They have a relationship, but what's the relationship? <laughs> you have to do more things. I will do that later, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, we can easily see the, the warmer weather and the higher cells go together. The correlation in this case is uh, about 90, 95%. Therefore, the relationship is good, but not perfect. High positive correlation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because I did some modification on it. <laughs> so what's the 
R squared. The R squared is a, a statistical measure of how closely a trend line match the date. So if in this example, I got the point in the chart, I can get a trend line across the, the date. So the R squared will tell you how close the, the date with the trend line. With the R squared, I can find the trade, how the trend line can represent this date, date trend. So it, if it's very closely, the R squared will be 100%. Uh, that means the higher R squared, the better mode fits your date. I will go back to this chart, I will explain this. Uh, this chart for for x x for the x axis uh, in, represent the load. Like I just this this is the load. The x for the y axis is the PPS means the packet per second. That means how many packets the network adapter can process, can handle in one second. So when the load increases, the PPS should be increased as well, right? But when the network adapter cannot handle that amount of traffic, they will go to the one line. So, The load and the PPS, they will be two variables. They have relationships. So I can calculate the correlation value between these two variables. So the blue dot line indicates the, the correlations. So you can find the correlation is always 100%. But at this, at this time, they will drop because they cannot increase. The PPS cannot increase. So uh, I give it uh, give the uh, correlation uh, a number. Ninety percent is my accepted number. So in. In this case, I can find here. There is a, a cross, two lines across here. So uh, I can find the uh, value uh, in the x for the load, right? And uh, based on the this the the blue line, I can get a liner. The liner will be y equals AX plus B, like this one. So if I find a X value, I can get the Y value, right? In my case, the max value should be which one? Maybe this one, the max value, right? But in, in my case, I don't want I don't want that that value. I just want a a value that can work for a long time. So the value will be here or there. Should be, a, should be this one, idea. It's a little bit difficult for me to explain it very clearly. So, <laughs> but Let me explain it again. <laughs> so uh, we have two variables, the load and PPS. When the load increases, like, oh. when the load increases, right, the PPS, the PPS should be increased as well. So this line, the blue line, 
indicate that uh, these two variables relationship they always increase, but at this time they cannot increase, right? So the correlation value will drop here, right? But I set uh, an acceptable, acceptable value for the correlations. I set it to ninety percent. So there will be a cross point, two, two lines cross point. Be here. This is the correlation. The dot line indicates the correlation. So I can get the cross line with the ninety percent here, right? So I can get the x value, right? And I can get a lander based on the the blue line. It's called y equals a a x plus b, like this one. The a and b, uh, you you can get it by some. In my case, I use the Google Sheet, so you can get it. It it will be generated automatically. So now you have the x value, right? So you can get the y value. That means you get what you want. It is not the max value. It's a, that means the, maybe lower than the max value, but it can work for a long time. Just in my case. Okay. Uh, for the, the third issues is about the mean and the median. Uh, the mean is the average uh, uh, you have used uh, where you add up all the numbers and then divided by the uh, number of the number of numbers, right? Uh, in this example, the the mean will be nine point seventy three. It's called average in the Google Sheet. Google Sheet uh, has a function called average to calculate the the mean value. Uh, and the Google Sheet has another function called median. It will calculate the median value. Median means the middle value in the list of numbers. It's nine. The difference between the mean and the median is the mean value is calculated. This value, you can not find the value from the, the list, right? That means the in the performance result, the mean value will not in your performance uh, performance number uh, generated by the I proof. It's just calculated. But the media is this value is in the array of your performance numbers. So that's the difference. Uh, which one is the best? It totally depends on your requirement. So your test result and then your, your, your permit. I prefer the median uh, in my case because median result always exists in the result, but mean result does not. In this case, maybe the, the difference is not too much, but in some case, they will be very large. The fourth one is about how I can find the spike in my performance test. Uh, I use another uh, mathematics. It's called the sand deviations. That means the sand de deviation is a measure of the uh, distribution of a set of data from it from it mean. Uh, perfect used to find the spike. Uh, do you know the deviation is the how you can find a mean value, right? And the, the real, the actual value, how far the the real value from the mean value. That means that if there's a spike, if there there's a spike, the devi the standard deviation result will be higher, or very high, or very low. 
so you can find it. Uh, because you can find from your result array, you can get the max standard deviation value, the minimal standard deviation value, and the mean deviation value, uh, the median deviation value. If the three value is totally different, that means there must be a spike in your test. Does it make sense? For the, the last one, it's about the, the, re, the result uh, demonstration. Uh, from my perspective, I like uh, a test report with, uh, with, a, with a table. It's a table report with some chart, right? The, the table report should be clean and simple and easy to understand. Uh, and the table report should include most important performance indicator. Uh, for the, there has to be some charts. The chart intended to supplement report sheet, report, uh, the, the table report. Uh, so I will give you an example of, yeah. This is what, this is an example I run the uh, performance test on the ESX. This is the report, report table. I have the, the RX PPS and the TX PPS and some throughput and the loss rate, average latency and the max latency. Uh, this is not the final, final one. I will add more into this. And we can find the RSD, standard deviation, with this value. If there's a, a very high or very low value, that means there must be a spike in my result. And I also include some CPU memory usage in this, in this report. So this is a, a table report. For the chart, uh, you can find there's some chart for you to reference. For example, this is the chart. You familiar with this step by step? Yes, this is the, re this is the result from the iProf. I approach the, the iProf result and put it into the Google Sheet. And Google Sheet will give you a line, a, uh, a line to indicate your performance. So you can find give you an overview of your the performance result. The spikes. Huh? Uh, a lot of spikes, yes. So, this spike, spike, spike. <laughs> so, yeah. Could you please repeat the statement you made just a minute ago about the standard derivation if the, if the number was too low or too high? Oh. In that table That's chart? Oh, yeah. You were mentioning you didn't use it, or you, you threw it out, or you... Oh, and the, the standard devi deviation? Yeah. Uh, the standard deviation indicated that the, uh, the spike, right? But, oh, but uh, uh, you mean uh, you cannot find the very low, very high <coughs> value here, right? Or did you not include them here? Uh, yes, but this... Uh, yeah. But this, uh, this uh, table is not, uh, the date behind this table is not the same as the, the chart. So, <laughs> so they are different. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, <laughs> because. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah. So uh, if, uh, if I uh, draw the picture of uh, the date behind this table, uh, it's very smooth. No spike. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'll go back. Okay.
so this is the, the, the last problem and my, uh, uh, my resolution. So that's all about my uh, presentations. Uh, if you are very interested in my topic, you can find it from the, the conference page. But this page is just uh, uh, for the Red Hat internal, so <laughs> maybe you cannot get it. But if, if you are interested, you can find me and give me you your email address. I will uh, make them to the PDF and uh, send, send you, right? Uh, that's all. Okay, questions. So is the expert tool, is that available on people? Uh, so is the XPerf tool, is that available to people outside of Red Hat, or is it only Red Hat em employees available at this time? Or I, I perf tool? The X XPerf, or is that? Uh, 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 so, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. The XPerf is the name of my project. Oh, okay. uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just call my this methodology, but just give it a name called XPerf. Yeah. Okay. It's just you. a name. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. You. No other meanings. <laughs> Sorry for confusing. Okay, Chris. Uh, when you're doing your testing, have you looked at percentiles instead of doing what, you know, average and mean, median? Oh. Mm. To be honest, I cannot find, you might test, I didn't find too much difference between the mean and the median. But uh, in some, my colleague gave me uh, uh, their test results. I found that. I found that one. But I, I really don't know what the scenarios they, what the scenarios they use. So, uh, I, but I think the, the median one is, is more reasonable from my perspective. But it's not the. Uh, it's not a regulation here. It just it depends on your, your requirement or your uh, test purpose. Right. Um, but in terms of knowing what the throughput of what you're doing, uh -huh. you know, what you want to strive for is, say, 80% uh, throughput or 80% of the time you're going to get through or 90% of the time. This is where percentiles will come in handy versus, you know, just doing an average or a median. Uh. Hmm. Oh, so from, uh, from all of the tests, uh, uh, test the uh, test value, the interval value is from the median, and uh, is uh, comes from the median. I use median all through my test. Not so part of is mean and part of median. No, it's always median. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just an announcement, we'll be having a party in the evening on the lounge. If you haven't collected your tickets, you can collect it at the registration desk. And we'll also have a keynote speech tomorrow. So if you're, if you check the schedule, you should be there at Metcalf Large. And uh, thank you for being here. Okay, 90% of the time I'm going to be at this throughput. 